quickly destroy the Archaeotech engine. Nothing could be done hastily and prudently from Marakia. So answers an apothecary. Waypoint reached. All die.
Avenge me, brothers! Destroy the Archaeotech engine. Nothing could be done hastily and prudently from Arachia. So answers an apothecary. Waypoint reached. All time.
everybody welcome back to angry badger minis I know it's been a while and we will see how I get through this one if I can do it without coughing my head off um, got sick there thought I got better or was getting better went on vacation sort of and came back and woke up sick the very next morning so um, there's that um, but on a brighter note um, we've got a new Warhammer Imperium magazine thing came in the mail it must have been while I was gone because I didn't I don't remember it I don't know maybe it was a couple of days ago who knows but anyway um, figure we open this up see what we got going on and then we'll talk to you about our Dark Eldar update Guess we'll see how damaged this is. Horrible, in my opinion, horrible packaging for something that's going to go on a binder and shouldn't be ripped or anything. But that's unfortunately the way things go, I guess. Alright, so we've got issue 39, which looks like we've got another one of these, um, what is this thing? I can never remember what this thing's called. Hold on. Issue 38. Oh, of course. It's <laughs> blocked by, <laughs> by a game mat. Alright, anyway. Issue 38 with some paint. And, uh, 39, 37. Which has, uh, some pipes. Which, um, these look like the plasma conduit pipes, which I don't have. Which is kind of cool. I have the other ones, the more gothic ones, and then we've got something Necron here. What is this thing? A Tomb Blade? No. Yeah, I guess it is. Tomb Blade? I don't know anything about that. So, we'll, uh, we'll get into these here in a second. Let's see here. Read about Necron Flyers. Am I getting a flyer? I'm, I don't think so. Things don't look too damaged around the edges or anything. Oh, we've got a, a basin, a flying basin here. I don't know if that's what they're classifying as a flyer. Let's see, I'm going to bring this up a little higher. Okay, so we've got that. It goes on, that looks like about a, I think it's tier 25 or 30, no, it's 32 millimeter flyer base. Um, looks like it's just one set of sprue. Pretty simple. I've never seen one of these before. Tomb Blade. I'm not sure how many of these I'm supposed to actually get. Um, They're showing three in here, but I mean, I don't know if that means I'll get more down the road or armory flyers. So they've got the Doom Scythe. Um, so they're saying this thing can actually operate in space. Uh, maybe it's like a small fighter or something. And here's the Scythe, Doom Scythe, and Night Scythe. I don't own any of those. That stuff kind of came out long after I had already kind of finished connecting, collecting Necrons. Um, but, you know, who knows down the road maybe. I don't... I've only got... Let's see, the flyers that I have... Um, I have Tyranid flyers, I think is what that the big giant not the forge world Herodon or whatever the hell that thing was called but um the next step down I guess of the Tyranids and then I've got a couple or well maybe four or five different uh, types of flyers for Space Marines of course um, I don't have 
Any flyers for anybody else that I can think of? Tomb Blades tutorial. This gives us a general idea, I guess, of how big it is compared to some intercessors. That's not too bad. Although, it's interesting that they're talking about pipes because I don't remember getting any pipes between now and then. And this is before we even get the pipes. Capture the forge, battle for the forge, as well as this mat. Okay, well, I'm guessing because they included it all together, you know, maybe that's why. So, alright. And I'll apologize if I'm going a little fast. Um, obviously, you guys can pause and go back on the video. There wasn't much really to look at there, just the one model and then you know, paint and stuff like that. Alright. For some reason we're talking about Tau, and I think, I don't know for certain, but I'm pretty sure that that's the next premium set that's on its way. There's going to be a uh, Tau Fire Warrior Squad with, um, uh, I think there might be, I don't know why I think there's some stealth suits in there or not. I, I think there are, actually. I can't remember. Alright, so these are the pipes. Yeah, those are pretty cool. I like those. Although, let's see here. Is this, this part right here, is that just supposed to stay open? Or do these go, oh, these must go in there like you're charging them or something. Well, that's kind of cool. I, I could, that's something that I could use as an objective, like an actual narrative thing, you know, you're, you're, maybe you're bringing it over there, getting it charged, or maybe you're trying to pull those to disable, you know, something, uh, yeah, okay, and these, these seem a lot friendlier on the hands, those gothic ones, man, they're sharp, they stab you like crazy, these would probably be, um, ooh, look at that, it's got a nice little, uh, little dials and stuff on there. These could probably be pretty easy to reproduce as well in a mold. These these I would I would I would take the chance on doing that with. Um, the other ones that I mean I've got so many pipes I don't really need to do that but for that style and that style would fit nicely if I wanted more stuff for my space hold board. And so theoretically that's what they're supposed to look like. We've got what is this? Okay, so for some reason that was separate. Um, I don't know why. Okay, Warzone. Warzone Siphos. I'm assuming the T is silent. Or, yeah, Siphos. Okay, Plasma Conduits. I'm assuming that these also. Excuse me. Um, I'm assuming these also have, you know, they can damage people to get blowed up, blown up, or whatever. Looks like they're talking more about the Mechanicum in here. Okay, how to build them? Um, I can tell you right now. Don't ever buy this stupid thing right here. This uh, mold line remover. It's that's useless tool. Oh, hey, look at that. Do not use glue. Make sure you do not use glue. Where you do not glue the plasma fusion batteries into the control unit. Okay. Right on. So at least we had that part right. I'm wondering if they've got... Uh, well, I don't know why I'm wondering. I'm sure they do have some scenario that involves these. And I have a ton of those, by the way, from the uh, Battle of Battle for McCrag uh, box set that came out way back when. Um, charge phase, cracking the Aegis. Power struggle. Both forces must secure the plasma conduits in order to achieve victory. The quickest and cleanest method of victory is surely the utter annihilation of the opponent. Uh, just to be clear, I thought they called these something else.
Yeah, they call them plasma fusion batteries. So, um, I don't see anything in here remotely talk. Oh wait, nope. Still don't see anything talking about the batteries. All right, well. Like I said, in my mind, that could be a thing like, you know, you get there, you recover them, and then you got to get them out. You know what I mean? So that's not bad. All right, let's see what we got here. Hold on a second. Okay. Number 38, got some new paint here. Can't really see at the moment what paint we got, but we'll check it out. So we got Space Wolves versus Tyranids on the front. Looks like a texture tool for some reason. I wonder if we're going to get any texture paint. Or is that what this is? Technical Astro Granite. Yep, so that's what that's for. I can honestly say I've never used this. I mean, I'm sure it's for basing. Um, I'm a Mod Podge, PVA glue, sand, gravel kind of guy. Um, that'll be interesting. And then we've got... How the hell do you say that? Would it be... Hell, I don't know. Your real yellow, real yellow, with the Y being silent. Hell if I know. Okay. Put this up out of the way. I think this is the one that has the, the game board. Yep. So I'll need to get that flattened. I'm actually, like, I read somewhere a long time ago, like, when the Imperium Magazine stuff first came out, that people weren't really happy with these things. Like, oh, it's useless. Why'd you include it? Blah, blah, blah. Well, oh, it's two-sided, too. I like that. I would disagree. Um... Especially like if you were vacationing and you wanted to have like just something to take with you to play on. Um, yeah, it's not going to be like your home board where you got all the high speed, you know, terrain and stuff. But I mean, you got it here and you just take some models with you. You know what I mean? Just small scale, maybe kill team type stuff. Um, and it folds up nicely. I don't know how long it would hold up, but you know. Alright, what we got here? Painting bases, so they're obviously going to talk about right here how to use the um, texture stuff it says two paints and one texture texture tool um, some pretty cool artwork right here with the space wolves fighting tear and is blowing that gene stealers spine out and you get to see the wolf guard there that's pretty cool I don't really see a whole lot of that All right, let me get some lights out of the way here and move this over a little better if I can And again, I apologize for my sniffling, and if I start to cough, I'm not over this yet. Nurgle went heavy. But I feel like I'm winning. Okay, so they're just talking about Space Wolves, the chapter, or adding chapters oh, into the binders. I saw something, too, uh, a couple weeks ago, or maybe it was when I got, got sick. Um, that I noticed that there's a discrepancy out there about how many issues there are, whether it's 80 or 90. I don't know. I think it's still 80, but I'm not sure. Rise of the Adeptus Sororitas, the Age of Redemption, Mephrit Dynasty for Necrons. Okay. How to paint. Alright, here we go. Let's look at it. I've, I mean, I've honestly never done this before, so I'm curious. Alright, so spreading the paint, spread the paint very thinly across the surface of the base. As you spread the paint, you should see the texture build. 
this is an example of too much applied if yours looks like this scrape some paint away this is the correct amount of texture paint by spreading that's a first when have you ever heard games workshop really other than Duncan tell somebody not to use so much <laughs> interesting okay command protocols hmm. I'm not sure how that stuff works right now and I guess we're gonna be getting a new edition next year maybe soon fight phase running the gauntlet and that's something that's really irritating me a little bit about this I mean I still haven't put my thumb on why they're doing this doing it this way but um none of the core rules like you see right here where it says core hold on let me get it in the camera here where it says core none of this is actually um come on camera what are you doing uh, none of this is in any order as it comes to you. You have to basically go back and find where things go. And maybe that's part of the fun. I don't know. It didn't seem fun to me, but it is what it is. So for those of you that did not buy this or you're thinking about buying it late or something like that, just know that that's what's going on. All right. What do we got here? Battle mat, new models, new paints, new scenery. Um... We don't have this, I think that's a Tomb Stalker, we don't have that yet. And we don't have this, uh, whatever this thing is, I can't remember. Um, the reverse side of your new battle mat is designed to sit alongside the battle mats included in issues 4 and 18. This will allow you to create a larger battlefield. Oh, okay. Well, that's handy information to know. Especially if you were thinking about throwing it out, which you know you shouldn't, but and I save everything. And here we got I think we're supposed to have three of these whatever these things are called. It's called a Catafron destroyer. Yeah, it says issue number forty, I'll get my third one. Okay, whatever. Yeah, it looks like we get the Chronomancer on issue 41, whatever Chronomancer is, and yeah, issue 40 will be, what does that say, the fall of Cadia? Huh, okay. stop myself from getting stupid here at the last minute or I'll end up tearing a page or something. Ah, oh, see? Now this is the stuff that annoys me. Oh, can you guys make out all those in, uh, impressions in the page from this? That's the stuff that really stinking annoys me. Damn it, dude. Well... And that's just because I'm, you know, comic book collector and I collect all this stuff. And just It's kind of like when you get the um, the artwork in your box sets and they're all indented from the sprues. It really annoys the crap out of me. Oh, man. Nothing I can do about it. Alright, what do we got here? A Blood Angel short story? Really? Maybe we'll read that. Discover new Forge Worlds, a new mission to play through. And of course the page came right off because that's what they do. Into the swarm. This must be the Blood Angel. Yep, that's what it is. Alright, well let's read this. For those of you that are hanging out painting painting. Alright. Lyson rushed under the exposed belly of the screeching hive tyrant and thrust his crackling power sword into the ravening beast's gut. The blade bit through the chitinous plate, releasing a stream of acid blood that steamed and hissed as it flowed across his weapon and down onto his gauntlet. Lyson's remaining squad mates poured fire into the winged beast, 
but despite their combined firepower, the monstrosity refused to fall. It scuttled forward, striking at Lyson with the sharp tips of its limbs, while simultaneously firing the living weapon attached to its winged form. The weapon spat forth a spray of seed-like projectiles that impacted the armor of the Blood Angels and sprouted into lashing barbed tentacles that ripped into the power armor, tearing Space Marines limb from limb. Lyson thrust again and again, avoiding the flailing creature's limbs as he struck the soft armor coating its underside. Despite the streaming, steaming streams of blood running from the tear in his wounds, Lyson's efforts appeared to have done little to slow its rampage. He made, he made to strike the creature again, only to be struck by a flailing limb, which caught him in the flank and pitched him backwards across a series of jagged rocks. He came to rest several meters away, head ringing from the impact. Thankfully, the tyranny remained distracted by his fellow space marines and made no move to follow up on the crushing blow it had dealt him. Lyson dragged himself unsteadily to his feet, his biomechanically enhanced body pumping rest restorative stimulants through his battered body, driving back pain and beginning to knit torn flesh and broken bones together once more. Captain Carlane's Terminator guard had overcome the Gene Stealer assault and were advancing swiftly over the bodies of their alien foes, Icor coating their blood red, red, blood red plate. The Hive Tyrant turned to face the new threat, bringing its Strangler Cannon to bear on the First Company veterans. Carlane had broken into a lumbering run. Seed-like projectiles thundered past his bulky form, felling several of his brothers, but doing nothing to slow the captain's determined advance. The Hive Tyrant's presence had drawn other Xeno's life forms to the fight. On the captain's flank, another vast alien monster lumbered into sight, a hunched quadruped bearing a colossal ranged weapon the surface of which was alive with flesh-eating beetles. Target the Tyrant effects, Lyson bellowed over his squad's Vox channel. Bring it down. Protect the captain. Drawing back from the Hive Tyrant's murderous rampage, squad Lyson turned their attentions towards the Tyrant effects. Two swollen biomorphs in the shape of extra limbs protruded from the Tyrant effects body. Thick clouds of buzzing beetles swarmed from holes in their surface. These tiny flesh-eating creatures were capable of burrowing through a space marine's armor and devouring the soft flesh beneath. His squad of ten had been reduced to five by the wrath of the Hive Tyrant. Lyson knew they had no hope of stopping the Tyrant effects alone. Their task was to distract the beast, not to slay it. Carlane and his Terminators had engaged the Hive Tyrant already. The Captain's Thunderhammer let out an audible crack with each blow he inflicted upon the Tyranid leader. Lyson Lyson's intercessors advanced slowly, bolt rifles raised to their shoulders. Target the eyes, Sergeant Lyson roared above the din of battle. A precise bolt of fire raked the creature's head. The majority of the rounds bounced away, deflected by its chitinous plate. But some found their mark, burying themselves within the beast's flesh and then exploding, sending showers of gore spraying out. The Tyrannofex let out an agonized screech and barreled forwards bowling the nearest intercessor from his feet and stabbing a pointed limb down into the stricken marine's chest. It raised a leg, shaking the dead soldier loose. More of the biting bugs poured from its colossal bulk in waves, the beating of their wing cases creating a hideous, disorienting, disorientating cacophony that overwhelmed the senses. Another space marine fell beneath the cloud, clawing and scratching as his ceramite plate let out, letting out pain cries as the flesh bores burned into vital organs. Lyson broke into a run, clambering up an outcropping of sharp rocks, his power armor servo motors propelling him forwards. He bounded from rock to rock, gaining height with each bounding step, before launching himself onto the beast's armored back. Driving his blade into a seam between two of the ridge plates upon the creature's back, he was rewarded with a screech of agony. Clinging to his weapon, he forced it deeper into the creature's body. Astride the ty Tyrant effects, Lyson glanced towards the Hive Tyrant. Captain Carlane's, Carlane's hammer descended upon the monster's skull with terrible force, smashing through chitinous plates and felling the Tyranid leader. Beneath Lyson, the Tyranic Tyrant effects bucked and twisted, dislodging him and pitching him into the dirt. The Tyranid loomed over him its slavering maw dripping acidic saliva onto his plate armor. Lyson knew that the death of the Hive Tyrant had severed the Tyrant effects from the Hive Mind, 
It reeled backwards as Bolt Round slammed into its armored form. All around, the tyrannous swarm had begun to lose its cohesion. A thin smile cracked across Lyson's bruised and battered face as he watched the swarm fall into disarray. This time for vengeance, the time for vengeance had come. Right on. That was a pretty good little story, especially if you're new to the hobby. Alright, what do we got here? Mostly Adeptus Mechanicus. Dude, I am never going to paint my guys like that. That's ridiculous. Now this, on the other hand, is not a bad color scheme. That's not bad. I'm looking for anything I can do that's not the typical red of the Adeptus Mechanicus. And the reason for that is, if I want to play them as Dark Mechanicum, before Dark Mechanicum rules come out, I guess, or whatever, but um, at least, you know, I can use them as either or. Or just, you know, more, they're going against, you know, what should be done, or their priorities of finding artifacts and things like that, or, you know, getting in the way of, you know, Space Marines doing what they're doing, or whatever, you know, some, some other, I don't want them to just have to fight Xeno's forces, I want them to be suspect by everybody, um, Portal's Disruptors, what the heck's a Portal Disruptor? In order to place the Portal Disruptors, Adeptus Mechanicus Force must hold at least one of the objectives. Place the plasma conduits, hemotrope reactor, and ruined factorums over the corresponding printed terrain. Beginning with the Necrons player, both players alternate deploying. Okay. Alright, I get it. Interesting. Well, and that's all there is for that. So I expect, well, I mean, I don't know when, but we'll be getting the, the Tau group in from the uh, Imperium. Uh, premium portion of the subscription. All right, so Dark Eldar, what are we doing? What what have we done? All right, so this might seem a little drawn out. So we went through, and literally, except for one guy, this guy right here that you guys have seen, he is the only Dark Eldar that remains with paint on him. All of the other ones have literally been stripped. Um, to include some grab tanks. Uh, actually, those grab tanks. Yeah, hold on. Let me grab them real quick. Okay. So I told you guys, and I think I even showed you, that I bought some grab tanks, used ones off of eBay. Okay. And I did. Um, I bought four. And let's see here. Let me grab these real quick. These are the four that I bought. This one that I just sat down, because um, I don't need to do it with these two. They're in pretty good shape. Um, hold on. Let me check my autofocus real quick. Okay. Anyway, um, sorry. This one right here. Oh, I see what's going on. Freaking. All right. Anyway, this one right here had all kinds of paint on it. Um, and in some cases, in some ways, you can still see that there was some paint. But see, the top was not glued down. And since I didn't really care about this light dusting here, you know, and it, I mean, this is going to go to Eldar anyway. Um, I just stripped the the paint itself, I think. Oh, no, I just set it down in there like that. That's what I did. I just didn't bother with the bottom. Um, and that will go to the Eldar army as Wave Serpent. Um, this one will go as well as a Wave Serpent. I've got the pieces coming. i got a buddy that 3D prints and stuff, and he's making me those. So that will... That will outfit that one along with a weather vane or what have you if we need it. Um, 
However, these two, and we don't have the picture now to show you, but these two right here, um, these are the ones that were all black that I had a long, long time ago that I mentioned to you guys about paint melting the plastic and things like that. And as you can see right here, that's exactly what happened way back when. And the only way for me to have fixed that was to put on more and more paint to fill it in. Now we have, you know, uh, filler primer and things that didn't exist back then. So I'm not too concerned about it. Um, although I'm also not concerned about it because this is going to be a dark Eldar ship. Um, along with these two. Now what you may have noticed is that I have sprue on the veins of the grav tank. Okay, and that's for a reason. I wanted to give some kind of... Um, hold on a second. <coughs> <coughs> it actually hurts when I cough. Um, I wanted to give it uh, some kind of, you know, extra detail that just, you know, it didn't just look like a grab tank. And so I also enlisted the help of my buddy. Um, uh, hopefully they'll be here uh, within the week, or maybe by the weekend. Um, he's trying his best to get things printed up right now. Um, he's got a lot on his plate actually that, you know, is trying to get done for me. We're getting some blades that are going to go on the sides here. Um, you know, on each side of the vein. And then there's going to be two more blades that kind of have like a dorsal effect that will come over the top. And then what we're gonna, what he's getting for me is um, basically... Here, let me pull this again. We're going to look for this piece right here and try to 3D print that piece. I'm, I'm gonna need one of these anyway. But 3D print this piece, sh like squish it in, elongate it out a little bit like an oval pattern instead of a round pattern. And then what that's gonna do is I'm gonna, it'll, ra it'll be raised up. Uh, let's see if I've got something here to show you, maybe. It'll, it'll sit raised up over the top of it like this. Um, with splinter rifles that'll be poking out. Just think of it kind of like a chimera type deal so that it will be considered open top. You can see the guns. It'll have, you know, as many guns as would be able to fire, which would be um, 11. Uh, well, at least 11. I don't know if I'm going to put all 11, but regardless, the original plan was to have a circular uh, deal like this. Um, but bigger, like 40 millimeter or something like that. And then, if you think like in the first movie Dune, like way back when, I, I haven't seen the new Dune movie or anything, but if you think about like when, you know, the Emperor and everybody, uh, when they released the Sadokar after, you know, Paul Atreides and whatnot, um, and they were in their golden, you know, landing ship, and they were all sitting on those benches or those chairs, you know, going around in a circle as they looked through their viewports and, you know, shot at people on the ground. That's kind of what I had in mind for this. So, um, and what that's going to do is it's going to eliminate what would I, I know I told you guys I was thinking about like putting, you know, Dark Eldar all over this thing, hanging all over it. Well, the more I got to thinking about that, gameplay wise, it would be way too cumbersome uh, to move it around and um, it just you know not a, not a good thing um, I just noticed I put Dake D-A-E-K Dake Eldar update <laughs> that's kinda of funny um, trying to figure out why my thing won't let me update it right now um, weird I don't know if I gotta do it individually or what the heck yeah it looks like I do um, let's see here oh <laughs> that's something else I didn't do yeah, every time you come back to doing this stuff, there's always something you miss. <coughs> uh, 
Okay. All right. Anyway. Um. So yeah, we won't have. Okay. Well, actually, let me back up. We won't have all those dark Eldar hanging off this thing. We may not have any. If we do have any, it'll be just like two on each one. But my goal is to not have these things just sitting there flat on the table. I want them in kind of a, a banking pose of some sort. You know, like they're uh, you know, they're dynamic in a way. So that's where we're going with that. And then I'll, I'll add skulls and things like, you know, chains and, and you know, hooks and stuff. And, I'm, and the hooks I'm going to use are going to be fishing hooks. Unless I get, you know, more plastic stuff from this guy or resin or whatever. Um, and uh, I think it's going to work out well. Now, for those of you that may be wondering how I got the sprue to line up, okay. No, I actually did not take the sprue and put it in hot water and get it soft. I just worked it with my fingers. Um, I think I have some here. Yeah, basically, so I, I just took the sprue and then just like, you know, every half inch or so, I just worked you know worked it with my fingers and then I would go back and do it until it just kinda you know works out but you gotta take your time because if you don't it'll snap right off as you guys can see it's already starting to bend and then I left the little um, these little uh, channel points or whatever you want to call them I don't know what they're officially called but I left those on to be my gluing points and you know and help raise it up off the you know off the vein now Obviously, you've got two options here. Either you have a bunch of sprues like I do, like you save everything, and you're able to find all of the same sprue to make sure you had the right ones like I do, or you don't really care about um, hold on, I don't, something else I forgot to do, um, or you don't really care that you're really going to see that down there. Like maybe you're not going to highlight it or something like that. Um, doesn't matter. Um, that's completely up to you or you're going to hide it with you know other bits and pieces or your paint job or whatever so so that's where we're at with these guys so we'll have four raiders um, that will be a part of this army and then I'm trying to remember I think we have a hundred and three warriors that are done I mean, well, all of the models are put together except for two key things. And I'll explain that here in a minute. We have 60 witches, okay? So I can have a witch cold army or just add as many witches as I want. Um, it was do this or just have even more warriors, which I'll be honest with you, I started getting bored with the idea of just having... A dark elder army, just nothing but warriors. Okay, and the only witches that are out there are like these guys, are for the OOP stuff, and I'm not going to buy any more because I don't really like the model. Are these guys right here? And um, you know, if anything, I, I can use these guys for like headquarters guys or whatever. If I want a lower lower rent army, if you will, smaller scale or something like that. Um, even though I don't particularly like. Uh, yeah, I don't particularly like the um, the heads on them. I might even cut them off. But anyway, what's missing on these guys, these witches, is their head. And so um, I'm going to try to pull it up here on Discord and show you what my buddy's doing for me. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, he printed me off all these heads, just waiting to get them. Um, let's see. Let me try to pull this up for you guys. Uh. Oop. Hold on. There it is. These are going to be my witch heads. And it started out <coughs> It started out we did not have enough, um, why well, say we, I did not have enough heads for even all of the bodies that I was able to salvage. Out of 200 and something models, um, uh, I can, I'll figure out exactly what it was. I think I posted it for you guys on a YouTube short. But out of 200 and something models, I only threw away 
Why well, say threw away? I didn't throw anything away. It's sitting in a bits box. Um, is it a bits box or I put it in a bag? I think it's in a bits box. Oh yeah, here it is. Hold on. So yeah, so out of all those models, oh, we still have all these bits. Let me. Move this out of the way, shrink it down. Um, and out of these bits, we've got we've got a bunch of broken legs in here. So if I was to find a way to make it work, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We would still have another seven, another seventeen. <coughs> excuse me, another seventeen um, models we could put together, and then of course we've got all these extra guns, bits, and stuff like that, blades and everything, and you know, what have you. Um, so I went ahead and put together as many witches as I could after I had put together all the warriors and scourges that I wanted. And we have 40 scourges. Um, so you guys are seeing what these are. They're basically, you know, their little splinter pistol and then the close combat weapon. And that means that none of the warriors are sitting there with a rifle and a freaking close combat weapon looking stupid. I I've never liked that. So um, they, all, they all have their hands, you know, both hands on the gun, if you will. So, I got to looking in here, and I just really did not like the witch models, of course. I never have. And this is the old 3rd edition codex, not even the up, updated version, okay? Um, the second second edition of the 3rd edition codex. And, hold on, I'll find it here in a second. Came across, I think it's in this one. Or no, wait, is it in this one? No, it's not in this one. Anyway... Here's your witches, which I couldn't stand, right? Well, then I... Here's the second edition one. I don't think it's in here either. I think it's in the new one. Yeah, it's in the new one. All right. These are both third edition, by the way. I never throw anything, anything out. Yeah, it's in here. I'm an idiot. Um, let's see here. There's a picture. Here it is. Bam, right there. The Cult of the Seventh Woe. Okay. Now, I don't really care about the name so much as I care about that head. That head is legit. And to me, I am fine with that versus not having a helmet. You know, you're supposed to be close combat, all this kind of stuff. And I mean, I don't know. I didn't really, like, look at... Well, here's another one. The switch with uh, Hydra gauntlets or whatever. Um, but that, that helmet, you know, is great. Well, trying to find something like that, of course, is not, you know, an easy thing to do. But, we found, you know, this. And, you know, or, uh, you know, this this helmet that you're looking at. And so, I'm getting a ton of those made, or they're already made, rather. Um, let me see here. I want to look at witches. I've actually never looked at these guys. This army is, again, being built for fun, I guess you could say. Because I'm not really like, okay, well, I need this and I need that. It's really about... There's so many of them, I'm just trying to keep it simple on the table so when I look at something I know what it's got and I can just move stuff and keep the game moving. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm never going to have all of these you know, options they have in the codex. It's not that important to me. Alright, so witches, strength 3, that's weak. Toughness 3, that's weak. 1 wound, 2 attacks, that's pretty good. 6 plus save, um, movement 8 inches, weapon skill 3 plus. So yeah, um, basically what I did <coughs> Again, excuse me, still trying to get over this stuff. Basically what I did was I, I started the army out with 40. 10 witches per raider. Okay, so if I wanted to play just an all witch army 10, in 10 inches, 10 witches per raider. And then I had extra body parts. And I'm like, okay, well, what am I going to do with 20 more warriors? You know, yeah, I can make another squad, but really? 
So, you know, I opted for 20 more witches, and that's what we did. So, on top of that, since those are going to be the heads for them, here we have, um, you'll have to excuse me, I have the Incubi in here as well, and then Leleth Harvespex and Drazer, wherever that, do oh, here he is. Um, let me just set that off to the side. Um, again, everybody got stripped of paint and all that stuff. So in this box, completely, um, oh, and this freaking little, whatever this guy's, I don't remember what it's called. I gotta put him with the other ones from the Blackstone Fortress. Um, anyway, all of these guys, except for the Incubi down the center here, uh, ten of them, are going to be my scourges. And if you'll notice, they're all put on, like, legit gravel rocks. Sorry. And they're in some sort of pose in some way, shape, or form. Now, initially, I was pretty happy with these. Um, my buddy's making me a set of wings, and it's just one set. They're not different sets. I just wanted something simple. But mainly because of the lack of, or the space that I'm running out of in the cabinet. So, <clears throat> the wing, and, I, and I'll be able to move the wings around a little bit, but they won't, you know, they're not going to be, like, furled out and all that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, um, all these guys will get a set of wings. Everybody in here, there's 40, 40 of these dudes. And what we did was, we've got your splinter rifle, we've got your dark lance, which is two splinter cannons pieced together. I just basically cut the barrel off and a little bit shorter, and then pieced it together, and, I mean, you really... You know, other than looking at it this close, you wouldn't even really, I mean, it doesn't matter. And then, of course, we have the splinter cannons, if you want that option, right? So, um, the more I got to looking at these, I'm like, okay, well, they're cool and all, but these heads, you know, I mean, yeah, they kind of go along with, you know, what's, you know, how the scourges typically were and are. But I really like this head that we're looking at for the witches. So I had to make me more, and I'm just going to pop these heads off and put witch heads on all these guys. I think it'll look a lot sleeker and a lot better um, as a model, like, as a whole. And uh, and then, so once the wings and the heads get here for these guys and the blades for the raiders, um, this army will be assembled. Um, this army of Dark Eldar. Now, I have some more Dark Eldar of the newer stuff. Um, <coughs> of the newer stuff that are not going to be intertwined with this army at all. Because they just do not match up for me. Um... What I'm going to do, and, and they're basically going to end up mostly being Inari. Now, I have two of the, what is it called, Aut Autark? It came in the, in, if you remember those, what is it, the Fall of Cadia, Fracture of Bealtan, and Rise of the Primarch, those box sets. Um, I have two, because I bought one and my wife didn't know and she bought me one I guess for my birthday or Christmas I forget which one it was so I've got two boxes of those that have two of those Autarchs in it two uh, your your Vrain I think is her name and two of the Yin Karn demon thing whatever I don't know what it is or spirit thing so what I'm gonna do is the one of those Yin Karns may end up being if I can do it right because I'm, I, st I thought I was gonna like the uh, the Necron um, Void of the Dragon, as I was called, or something like that. But I don't. I, I the more I look at it, the more I hate it. And the only thing that makes it different from the Incarn thing is the lightning bolts, which are lame, and it's got the little you know pixels being taken out or forming together. And then his body is like you know any other body. So, it's either going to go, I'm going to swap the head out or something like that. It's either going to go to the Necrons, the second one, or I'm going to move it over to Fantasy, like in the Undead, you know, section or something like that. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, or maybe Chaos or something like that. Um, but one of those Autarchs will go to this army. 
and then the rest of all this Dark Eldar stuff will all go to Yanari. Um, I've already done the, the list and everything, and it works out. I understand how, you know, you mix the Dark Eldar with the Eldar, or Eldari and Drukari, whatever the hell you want to say. Um, I understand how all that works now, and, um, yeah, and it's gonna, it's gonna work out great. So, that is where we're at. We're just waiting on these heads to show up, and we're waiting on the, uh, you know, we're waiting on the, um, wings to show up, and the blades for the grav tanks and then and I will be you know <coughs> doing all that on stream so you guys can see what I'm doing and I will be more than happy to if you're interested to push uh, Sean's stuff or his um, you know if he's I'm sorry if he's happy to do it or whatever I'll push him you know towards you guys if you know that's work he's willing to do so <coughs> So that's where we stand on all that. So, <clears throat> what does that mean for having to wait a week or more for stuff to come? Well, I forgot this was sitting in the box. And I think I mentioned it to you guys on one of the videos. Uh, Rogue Trader Kill Team Expansion. Um... I don't even know. I think I might have opened this box once. But I really don't even know what's in it. Oh yeah, that's right. We had some Nurgle type stuff. Uh, we don't know how much stuff is in here. So what I was thinking of doing was... Is that an assassin? That's kind of a... Looks like an assassin. I was thinking of putting this stuff together. Um, all right, what does it say we got here? It says, I'm gonna get this camera down for you guys. All right, let me get the light moved too. All right, so it says, this box contains Rogue Trader book, codex, codex, Double-sided game board. Interesting. Fold-out Warhammer 40,000 core rule sheet. Well, I guess you guys you can use these in 40k. Uh, Ten Elucidian Elus Star Striders Kill Team data cards. Uh, I don't know what that is. Is that some kind of Imperial Guard dude? I don't know. Two Elucia Vein Tactic cards. Elucid, Elucid, uh, Elucidian Star Striders Kill Team Tokens, 20 Jeller Pox Infected Kill Team Data Cards, 6, six Jeller Pox Infected Tactics Cards, 2 Vulgar Thrice Curse Tactic Cards, Jeller Pox Infected Kill Team Tokens, 33 Miniatures are in here. What? 10 Eluc Elucidian Star Striders and 23 Jeller Pox Infected. Okay, all right, so, Jeller Pox Infected. I don't know, I wonder if they're like the, the Pox Walkers or if they're different. Well, let's check it out, because I have no clue. Yeah, we definitely never opened this. Okay. Let's try to get a little more going on here. Alright, so we got some terrain here. It's kind of cool. Looks like some kind of little drop pod or escape shuttle stuff going on. Did I have I opened this before? I feel like maybe I have. I don't know. That's cool, you can see inside it, so if you don't glue it, glue the door shut on it, you could do a couple little magnets, easy day, <clears throat> if you cared about that stuff, which I do. Um, it's too bad these doors don't open, though. That's probably something they heard about when they built the, uh, the new Space Hulk, uh, whatever that new thing that they're putting out. 
All right, what's going on here? We're hooked. All right, so there's looks like there's four of those things. Some terrain. All right, and then we got these people. see because of the Nurgle stuff. I'll have to, I'm sure they got a book in here that will show us what they all look like better than just looking at this. Um, Teller, Pox Walkers. I don't know. I don't know. This is weird. Okay. Excuse me. Probably some artwork that's all damaged now. It's not. Yeah, right there. Bam. Gosh, man. Ah, that really stinks, man. They could really put these in a lot better. Alright. Oh, you know what? I have opened this because I don't have the book here. It's probably. Hold on, I might have it over here. <coughs> Bingo. Okay. So it's not pox walkers as we know it, clearly. It's just you know what they're saying here uh, they just look different the jeller pox infected now these models are pretty cool I like dude these guys right here dude check this out if if I could make I'm sure it's all one piece hold on let me look at this but if there was a way Let's see, where is this guy? Okay, so this guy right here is the guy that would have the pistol. Oh, and he's got a las, las gun hanging off of him. And then you've got... Oh, right here. I don't even know why I'm bothered. If I could make a copy of this guy and that guy. And even that guy. But really, these guys, dude, you got a small, I mean, you've got another Imperial Guard army that's pretty legit looking. Oh, man, that's, I'm going to get in trouble. I know it. Going crazy with ideas. I don't have room for this. I still have, what is it, uh, 80 times 5 is... 400. I got 400 freaking war zone models I got to put together. 200 for each army that are going to be two Imperial Guards style armies themselves. But yeah, man, that's. Hmm. Well, a lot of this stuff seems pretty simple to put together. So I'll probably just put all the chaos stuff together just so I can get it knocked out and out of the way. And then I'll I might save these guys or I'll put these guys together, but I may not glue them together if I can help it. I'll just you know press them together. Yeah. Um. Probably not gonna do that right now. I need to I need to sit down and think about that before I yeah before I do that. So, let's try not to screw this up any more than it is. So, I apologize, we're not going to put those together tonight. Okay. I'm going to put this back. I need to, I definitely need to sit 
sit and think about that for a minute. That means I probably need to look at downstairs and make sure I don't have any more kill team boxes like this. I don't think I do. But there's no telling. I know that I stripped the one that had Tau and Space Marines in it. And those Tau were put together, but I don't know. I'll have to look at that again. Um, I started really actually reading this Drakari Codex. And I know that they'll make another one, or whatever. Um, and I gotta say that uh, I, I didn't get very far, um, mainly because I was falling asleep when I was doing it. <laughs> but um, I'm starting to understand now more why the Raiders, the way that they look as the uh, pirate ship style thing why they exist um, and I knew this it just I don't know if I had to just read it again or what the problem is but with me but essentially uh, and then I yeah let me just finish the thought so essentially what I gathered out of this book versus the old book is that there are many different points all over the webway that the Dark Eldar have I mean they know exactly where they are and they have those points basically mapped out so that they go to specific hunting grounds if you will you know there, there's no there's no error whatsoever they just go in there and they show up right where they want to be and you know create terror um, where I'm finding a problem though and I know GW stuff is never consistent where I'm finding a problem is the concept of well the fiction that I've read versus what is in this book um, and of course I guess what most people think is that you know a Drakari or Dark Eldar force is typically just a really small scale army to do some hit and run raids when even in Brothers of the Snake that is not the case uh, as a matter of fact they came uh, I mean they came in strength it's when um, uh, squad uh, Damocles with um, Pryad I think it's the first maybe it's not the first time that Pryad meets um, Gosh, why can't I remember his name? But their librarian, their chief librarian. Um, oh, gosh, why can't I remember his name right now? Anyway, um, Pryad and, Demo and you know, Damocles squad are holding a rear guard, right? Uh, well, sort of. Basically, they're there to, you know, uh, catch. And, and it's kind of funny to me because this is something I did in real life. Um, just not against Dark Eldar. <laughs> Uh, they're, they're basically there to pick up stragglers, you know, that might be trying to, you know, Dark Eldar or whatever, trying to escape, you know, randomly. Um, something I did in the first battle of Fallujah, um, with my sniper team. And, um, similar to this whole thing, which is hilarious, now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't, I haven't thought about it each time I read this book. We ended up actually picking up the, in, the entirety of... You know the insurgent forces that were moving through Fallujah. Um, what you know the battalions and regimental combat team commanders thought was, you know, just you know anybody that was trying to, you know, we'll say overflow or whatever, just trying to milk their way in, turned out to be the the actual line of departure for the bulk of their forces. Now we didn't find this out until afterwards, you know, drone footage and stuff like that, but. Um, I, I was curious why I was engaging so many targets and whatnot. Well, getting back to the story of Damocles Squad of the Iron Snakes and Pryad, they were doing something similar, if you will, or at least just holding the ground. And um, what ended up happening is 
and, and this is when they kind of paint the picture that the Dark Eldar don't always just show up in little small pocket, you know, raid forces, if you will. They had basically taken over this bastion. And not only had they done that, they had also, it, it wasn't just, let's just show up and, you know, grab. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <clears throat> show up and grab you know slaves or humans or whatever they had actually and I hope I'm not spoiling the book for you guys it's a really good book uh, Brothers of the Snake by Dan, Ab Dan Abnett um, they had actually put charges like explosive charges um, inside this you know the fortress or whatever and when Damocles squad or whatever decided or you know had shown up on the scene to do their rearguard mission they, they took like super amounts of heavy fire uh, from the Dark Eldar from the, the Bastion walls. Um, they basically had taken over this Bastion as their own you know stronghold and uh, it took um, and I can't remember his name anyway one of the guys in Damocles squad had a plasma cannon and it took uh, you know him basically shooting at this one particular spot over and over to blast a hole through this bastion wall um, and you know it, it caused a breach because basically Damocles needed to get in there rather than be out in the open and getting picked off um, and so they were able to do that a bunch of Dark Eldar you know died or whatever and they were called they're called Dark Eldar in the book or primals as well um, got crushed you know they fell from the ramparts and the, you know everything fell on top of them and crushed them and stuff but uh, that's when you got you really got the scope of just how big these raiding parties can be they can be full-sized armies which is what helped me in building this one with the amount of models I had cuz I'll be honest with you I was like what am I gonna do with all these models and something that occurred to me was I, I or something I had forgotten about rather as I couldn't remember why on earth I had so many Dark Eldar out of print bodies legs and chests and all that stuff and then I remembered I got them used off of eBay like you know just bits and like bits and pieces not all like you know one big thing or anything like that because I used the legs and the heads uh, like the, the the out of print heads that had the single they didn't have a helmet on, but they had a single uh, uh, ponytail. Um, wait, was it the legs? I don't know. I can't remember. All I know is I bought a bunch of this stuff because it was super cheap. These guys, I guess they were just trying to unload it. And I needed bits for... I wanted a little bit, I think, of a bigger Dark Eldar army because all I had at the time was the Dark Eldar from the third edition box set, which I think is like 20, maybe, or 10. I forget how many is in there. But that's all I had. And then I wanted those other pieces because I ended up using those to make my Sisters of Silence Sisters of Battle army. It's a Sisters of Battle army, but they look like Sisters of Silence. And that was long before Sisters of Silence even existed, as far as models were concerned. So, <clears throat> um, they look like them, in, in a way. And what I did with the faces was, I basically just uh, shaved off, you know, or, um, you know, like cut off and, and shaved off the mouth pieces so that it looks like it's just kind of like an Optimus Prime type of, you know, face thing. And I figured I would just paint that later or something or add pieces of plastic card or, or paper or something like that. And uh, and that's where I can't, had all these, these, these bits and pieces. And to come out with, what did we say, 16 or 17 broken legs left, you know, out of all those bits and 103 warriors, 60 witches and 40 freaking scourges out of all that, that's amazing. And they're all legit, like, you know, got all their parts and pieces. They're not, like, you know, going to look stupid or anything. And now we're going to add these heads that you guys see right there on the screen and the wings. It's, it's, and oh, and all the wings, by the way, none of them are bat wings. They're all feather wings, um, which is going to be awesome. So, 
that this army that I wanted to put together for so long, and I and, and that's the other thing. I don't again. I don't like the the Dark Eldar Raider model per se. But what? It, but I I had always in my mind put putting that aside. I'd always in my mind envisioned that my Dark Eldar were not so far removed from the Eldar themselves, and so when they left the craft worlds and stuff like that, you know, when Slanesh was born and all this kind of stuff, they took things with them, or they've raided Eldar, you know, craft worlds and stuff, and they've stolen equipment, and that's, you know, that's where these grab tanks come into play, using them as the raiders versus the, you know, the, the pirate ship Return of the Jedi skiff looking thing, you know, um, so I think it's going to work out really well. Uh, and, you know, and, and after all these years, I mean, we're talking, gosh, man, I got in this hobby in 98. 98. And that's, what was it, June of 98? Because I the first Games Workshop store I ever walked into. And two, two or three years before that, I had bought some Rogue Trade Era Space Wolves and a, a Vindicare Assassin in a pawn shop that were just, that's all they had, it was just sitting there. It wasn't anything like, you know, a, a section of models or anything. I ruined them with enamel paints. I didn't know anything about painting miniatures and stuff. I knew how to paint model planes and stuff, but I, I didn't have the skills that I have now. Um, and anyway, uh, yeah, so June of 98, was in Dallas, Texas. I can't remember the name of the, of the mall, but I walked into that first Games Workshop store, saw a third edition box set, and I bought it. And I'm, I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, where I was even going with that? Well, because of whatever was in that box set. I think I think there's only. I'm pretty sure there was only ten Dark Eldar warriors. Because I think it was ten Dark Eldar warriors, five Space Marines, and a land speeder and some terrain. I'm pretty sure that's all there was. But anyway, um, and something I wanted to show you guys, because I mentioned, I think I mentioned, <coughs> man, I think I mentioned this before. If you take a look. In the old third edition codex, just to show you how bad things were back in the day. Let's see here. Green Pirate 78. Old school player. Oh, yeah, man. So, see this page right here? Oops. With, uh, and I'm pretty sure I used the purple one just so it didn't stand out too bad. I photocopied this, right? This is how poor we were, if you will. And you couldn't really get stuff back then, especially in Japan. Um, I'm trying to find something that I can use as a pointer here. So I, I photocopied this, right? And then what I did was um, I put it on cardboard. And I mean cardboard, like cereal box cardboard. And I think I did, I think I did four of these, if I'm not mistaken. Or maybe it was only two, I don't remember. Yeah, it was only two. That's right. That's all I had the models for. Oh, no, no, no. I did do four because I did... The others were like Ravagers or something like that. Anyway, um, what I did was... This was flat, right? Um, except for... Um, I think I cut this part off or whatever. And then what I did was with this one, I made it two-sided. And then all I did was I cut a slit right in the middle like this. And then I slid this piece in there like that so it was it looked like something like this if, if hold on something like this if that makes sense to you guys or yeah like that so that and then you know put it on a base and then you had an actual platform there with a, a model that was represented you know even though it was cardboard and paper so <laughs> um but I, I mean i absolutely hated it but you know, it was what I, it was. It was the way to get the Dark Eldar into our club that we had over there, and get them, you know, where people could play against them. And 
I think after the first two battles, they were never played against again because they just obliterated everybody the way I played them. Um, and, you know, most guys were Chaos or Space Marine players, and they thought they were invincible until I, you know, started bringing out all these Splinter Cannons and Dark Lances, and it was just like, holy crap, you know. Because, and then this is kind of how I play even today, you know, well, I say, I mean, those of you that have been members of the channel for a while, you know I haven't played in forever. Um, who knows when I'll ever get a chance to, but um, the the method in which I play, okay, is about having fun. But that fun, while yes, I want my opponent to have fun and I want to have fun too, that fun for me is the tactics involved of fire and maneuver, okay? I don't put a lot of stock in, and this is why I don't really like the rules as they stand now where you got to take two HQs and all this other nonsense, and I know that's so they can sell models and things like that. If you look at my army list, even with those two HQs, unless it's models that I have, like the uh, Lelith Hero Specs and the Drazar for these guys or whatever, I will probably not use them unless I have to. I'm about saving points and putting them into bullets. Points into bullets. Because even though I don't have metal lists, I'm going to be rolling a lot more dice than most of my opponents. It's just a law of averages, if you think about it. And in my mind, again, as you guys, you know, that have been members of the channel for a while, you, you've heard me say this. In my mind, it's about the artwork that I see with the thousands of bodies on the battlefield duking it out. So you can imagine how much firepower is going downrange. So, if you take a look at this Dark Elder army. If I can recall it off the top of my head, just the warriors alone, we've got an 11 man squad. Well, we've got 44 warriors, four 11 man squads that will fit in the raiders, you know, our pseudo raiders when we get all the pieces to, to kit bash these. Um, and then, so that's 44, we've got 103, because I can't count right now. Let's see, 103 minus 44. Alright, well then I screwed up. So oh, that's right. I guess I, I'm either going to have to make another one or maybe I was going to include this guy. Because there should be 60 even. Yeah, I think, I think I'm going to include this guy. Because I think I was going to still go with that color scheme. That's right. Anyway, um, 60, 60, well, three squads of 20 Calibite Warriors or Warrior Squads. That each one will have two Splinter Cannons. Okay. So, I, I know that splinter cannons back in the day used to be heavy weapons. Well, they're not now. They're assault weapons, which is interesting. I can see why people. Whoops. I can see why people hate Dark Eldar because of the amount of firepower they have. But they're supposed to. They're they're squishy. So let's see here. Um, let's just go over this a little bit because I'm not I'm not like that well versed. So if we have a 20-man squad of splinter cannons, I'm sorry, sp splinter rifles, that's 24-inch rapid fire, and they're poisoned, by the way, poisoned. That means, if I'm not mistaken, let me, I'm just going to go ahead and go here. I'm pretty sure it means that your opponent cannot save, I think it's over, a, it has to be a 4-plus, four, four or no, you can wound on a 4-plus, no matter what, I think. Hold on, let me find it here. Uh, yeah, the weapon wounds on a 4+, plus unless it's targeting a vehicle or a titanic unit, in which case it wounds on a 6+. plus. That's pretty good. So, and that's that's your base rifle, okay? Um, so, now imagine, you know, you've got 18 of these rifles at 24 inches for one squad. Now I've got three squads, not including the other four squads, of 11 each that are flying around on a freaking Raider that's also got guns, okay? The amount of fire maneuver, geometries of fire, intersecting lines of fire is it's just crazy. So, and then you've got the splinter cannon. I'm sorry, it's not assault, it's rapid fire as well. 36 inches, rapid fire, poison as well. Rapid fire 3, okay? Um, 
there is something I have to find it. I'm not going to bore you guys to death with it. There's something in in the Dark Eldar. There's a it's either a discipline or whatever you want to call it that you can um, do where I think you're either able to add range or treat your your half the half of your range is longer. So I don't know. I can't remember now. Uh, like I said, I'm still trying to get over this sickness, but anyway so out of out of three squads of 20 we've got six splinter cannons if they don't move at 36 inch range okay firing three shots a piece if they're half range six shots a piece and then add all those splinter rifles dude that's crazy and then you've got the scourges with four dark lances or four splinter cannons, or a mixture of the two, and all this, you know, and I, and I, they're ten man squads, man. So four, four scourges running around, and then all sixty witches, and it's just it's crazy. And for me, that's going to be fun because I don't have to sit here and go, okay, what, what do I got here? You know, what the heck's a, an awesome factor? What the heck is that? Twenty four inch assault one. Okay, AP minus three D one. Um. No, that's, uh, I mean, unless there's a way for me to, you know, to really up the ante and add that to a bunch of dudes, in my mind, it's not enough bullets, you know? And, I mean, think about it, splinter rifles and the, from everything you read in the, vol uh, the novels and stuff, it's just a, you know, it's like this, uh, you guys have played Halo before, right? Think of the, um, the, uh, the little splinter pistol or whatever, I think that's what it's called. Um, that the grunts have, you know, or, or I'm sorry, the covenant because the elites have it too. Um, and I think the brutes will pick them up too, but, um, you know, how those all come flying out. That's in my mind, that's what's coming out of both the shuriken catapults for the Eldar and the splinter cans or splinter rifles for the, um, dark Eldar or Drukarian Eldari, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Um, so yeah, so that's where we're at with the dark Eldar probably beat them to death um, but I will once those parts get here I will be doing those on the live stream and then I got this guy I don't know if I showed you guys this guy yet I don't know what happened to my old one I just happened to be looking at my dark angels that I put together and I realized Ezekiel was missing I don't know if he got lost in, in the move here or what happened what I do know is that the Ezekiel that I had never had this banner so I went online and I found him on eBay and he came to me loaded with paint and in about an hour in the sonic cleaner this is what you got he's completely clean and put together and he looks magnificent and he's on a 32 millimeter base so nobody will complain a bitch <laughs> Not saying anybody would. I mean, who the hell am I going to play with? It seems. Hell, I might die on the stream. You never know. Um, <laughs> so um, that's where we're at. Uh, we're just waiting on those parts to come. We'll finish up the Stark Eldar army, and uh, we will move on to the Eldar. What I plan to do. I gotta get caught up on schoolwork. But what I plan to do this week, while I'm waiting on those parts, since there's nothing else I can do with Dark Eldar, is I'm going to start getting into the Eldar themselves. Now the Eldar, oh wait, what am I saying? No, I got to get into the the newer models of the Dark Eldar. I forgot I've got all those. Never mind. I've got other shit to do before I get to the Eldar. Um, hey, I think I made it. Isn't there something on YouTube you can't curse within three three minutes of your stream or video? Anyway, um, when we get to the actual Eldar, that is going to be a task. Um, there are four Wraith, Lord, or Wraith Knights. Um, I don't even know. Let's see, we've got three of the old school Wraith Lords. We've got... I don't know how many of the new Wraith Lords. A ton of freaking Wraith Guard. I mean a ton. Both old school, out of print, and the new ones. Um, I know that I want to make 
or I'm going to try to make unless I find them cheaper online on eBay I want to make my own shining spears um, I don't I don't want to buy them they're too expensive for no reason whatsoever and I have a ton of warlocks I gotta sort through some of the models will be the same but since I've got three or four of the old Eldrad warlock model or Eldrad model of the out of print ones and then I've got the new one that came in the Harlequin box uh, against the Death Watch I forget what uh, it's called Death Mask he is going to be my actual Eldrad model for Ultway and the other ones will just be Warlocks um, I thought about having a couple of different like one or two or two different Eldar armies but none of the other ones do anything for me um, I like Ultway and I like the fact uh, unless I've got it wrong that they're the ones basically guarding against chaos like literally um, let me see I'm gonna look it up real quick it's been a while so Ultway and chaos uh, let's see some reason I get I don't know why I always say uh, I'm gonna say it wrong and in and in I don't know uh, yeah Ultway was caught in the gravitational pull of the eye of terror when it formed during the birth of Slanesh and now orbs it yeah that's the ones Perilously close perilously close to ultimate absorption and under regular attack from the denizens of the eye of terror being so near the eye, the craft world has fought long and bitterly against chaos forces. Areas within the craft world lie in ruins from battles fought within Ulthway itself between Eldar and Chaos Raiders. Raiders, the location of Ulthway is a reason given by Ulthway for maintaining such a large number of warlocks, and that's that's what I have. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, let's see here. And Eldrad is, is there, you know, of course. Uh, and I guess I didn't know this because I haven't read them yet I'm like years behind right now uh, says Ulthway forces under Eldrad Ulthran attempted to stem the tides of chaos shortly before the 13th Black Crusade by launching an ambitious plan at the Battle of Port De Desminus, Desminus in order to resurrect Yanid the plan failed, and during the crusade itself, Ulthway aided Imperial forces against the forces of Abaddon. Uh, shortly after the formation of the Great Rift, Ulthway itself came under assault by demons. Um, yeah, so that's basically what I'm planning on doing. I just I'm running into this issue where it's like almost every army that's out there, unless you do something really crazy. Um, they're all dark in color, or black, or something. And Ulthway is, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, they're gonna be Ulthway, but they're not gonna be the tr the traditional all black, because I've already got a, a color scheme going that I that I like for the models that I've already got painted. I will probably strip those models so that I can make sure that everything is done the way it, you know it's all done the same. Even though my wife's gonna give me hell for it um, reason being is that was back in the day when dry brushing your army if you could dry brush your whole army you were like the man and I did that and they came out great but I'm not gonna sit there and dry brush all of this stuff that, that took forever um, so I'll probably strip them down and uh, just go back and repaint you know and then everything will be cool so with that guys, I'm going to go ahead and call it because I need to get some rest to get over this sickness nonsense. Um, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and um, just keep you know keep looking at Discord if you're not on that. 
Uh, and uh, I will always, like I said, before I go online, I will do my best to put out a, a notice in advance, you know, a couple hours or, or more if possible. But this is generally the time for you guys that are new to the channel. I noticed that I went up in some membership or subscribers. Thank you so much. Um, we're growing this channel with your help. So thank you guys so much, and we will see you next time.